on the 215. It's all about the wax at Crate Diggers, the lyrics with Reef the Lost Cause, the production with Hezekiah, and bringing down the house with Lady Alma. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the 215. I'm Mike Jarrett. And I'm Breland Moore, and we're hanging out in Maniunk tonight at the PHS Pop-Up Garden. But this is not really a pop-up. Not so much. They've been around here for mm -hmm. three and a half, close to four years. Let me give you a locator. We're just off Main Street at Jamestown Street. Let's get to our first story of the night. Vinyl, all the rage right now. Could not be hotter, but where do you get it? Crate diggers, apparently. So I've been collecting records since like 1996, and in 20 some odd years, I've never seen anything hip hop heavy. This is like a, what I call the baller wall, because everything on here is mad expensive. I was like, Conway, if you know Conway the Machine, you know that you don't just see food one, two, and three, reject, reject on steroid. Crate Dickens is basically it's just an idea that I had because I haven't really seen many places that exist like it. Tons of local records. My homie Miggs, Four Elements and Beyond is his group. My homie Reef the Lost Cause, he's one of the greatest rappers in Philly history as far as I'm concerned. Freeway, I mean, Screw Tape, my homie Screw Tape, we just had a record release for him last night in here. Tough Crew, shout out DJ Tough. The Roots, OT The Real, Jedi Mind, I mean, this is all stuff that's that's essential Philadelphia listening. And I really focus on like stuff that you can't really find in a lot of places. You got, like, the classic stuff. You got like the, the R.A. the Rugged Mans. You got the Wu Tangs. You got the Jay Z Reasonable Doubts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ain't never gonna find this anywhere else. What makes Crypt Diggers different from any other record store that we see around the city? I definitely feel like it's more focused on community. Tonight we're doing the Flip a Beat Club. Flip a Beat is basically a community of people that make beats, get to go out and meet people and connect with artists and connect with other beat makers. Everyone gets the same package of samples and then they make their own variety of beat from those samples. So then after everyone's done making their beats, they have a, a two hour period of time to make them and then everyone shares them with everyone all over the country. We got people doing house, we got people doing techno, we got people doing classic hip hop, some more trapped out hip hop. We're just kind of sitting here, headphones on, in the zone and just making beats. And then we all get on the Zoom meeting. Yeah, we, everybody just plays their beats. And that part is ours. I mean, like, beat after beat. Up to flip a beat club, that's the cavalry. You know, I've been spitting for like 15 years. I'm in the jungle where it's grimy. I just come here because it's sometimes hard as, a, as an artist, you know, I, I link with producers all over the world, but to find somebody that's local to build with, I didn't know about any of these people. Like, and so I came here and they're wonderful, creative human beings. It's not a competition. All skill levels are welcome and there's no prize. However, the real prize in it is who you meet. You might meet somebody you can work with and make a whole album. <laughs> I'm definitely not the greatest businessman. I'm definitely more focused on friendships and like having a place to, to be able to have fun parties and shows for underground artists. And I mean, you don't have to pay me. We just come in and we have a big party and hopefully I sell some records and that's, that's good enough. So Great Tickets is located on the 700 block of South 4th Street in Philadelphia yep. if you want to check them out. But you can also find them on Instagram at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> hey, honeysuckle. Oh, hi. Now I'm talking about the flowers. Oh. They have tons <laughs> of flowers to look at and smell. There's hummingbirds and butterflies all over the place here at the garden. We want to get to our second story. Which is about... Uh, hip hop. Hip hop. It's been part of the culture for 50 years. And Philadelphia has a really rich history. Especially when it comes to MCs. Yeah, and you're going to meet one of them right now. I'm a king special. I'm in a king session. I don't king session. I'm a king medicine tested. This was day job. So right now I work at Penn. I work for a program called Beyond the Bars, which is a, uh, a nonprofit that we build studios all over the city. I work with uh, Shot Vintage Sports. I also work with the Philadelphia Prevention Partnership, um, doing programs, um, running you know youth seminars, things like that, and um, and I rap. You know what I mean? I rap. And I do I that. I do that too. People still put a lot of stock in the one I drop it. What I got next? That's not a flex. When did you and Reef hook up? Maybe 2010. How fortunate is it for you, man, as a producer, man, to, and, and a DJ, to, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's cliche, but like, me and Reef like finish each other's sentences when we're in the studio. They call me Papa Bear, posted in my easy chair. I Maybe just always loved rapping, and I love rap music. The period in when, which it became something I pursued serious was around 1920. I just kind of dropped out of college. I was trying to find my way. It was something that the only thing that was giving me happiness, so I just poured myself into it. 
Grizzly with a flow, filthy killing me. Soliloquy till I'm 63 like Mo did. The fact that we just stay to what we feel like is inspiring us, then it's always going to be timeless. I'm the OG, you get love from the new school. My, my path has been a true underground independent movement. People fear though, some type of weirdo somehow managed to live off rap for 10 years though. It's definitely been a, a, the path less chosen as far as like, that's not why I do it though, you know what I mean? I, I kind of, you know, even just jokingly with the name, right. you kind of let people know like I'm a lot, like I'm not going to do the thing that's supposed to, I guess, sell records. I'm, I'm literally going to give you exactly what I'm feeling and thinking. That's the truth. Jesus Christ, trust in me, believe in me. Honestly, man, when I rap with you, right, I like you for the music. Sure. But what I liked more mm. about you mm. was your family energy. Sure, man. I'm a father to two sons and one daughter. I understand what's the most important. I have three children and a wife. You know what I'm saying? My oldest son is nonverbal autistic. My world is them first. And before that, it was just the music. So every high, every low, every... Uh, success, every disappointment, everything was based on that. When I leave here, I'm going back to the real world. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, I'm doing an interview with my man Mike for Fox. Right? That's 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 surreal. That's dope. But at, when this is over, I'm gonna go change some diapers and give baths and make sure everybody gets ready for bed. And that's the the stuff that is the most important to me. So the music becomes secondary. And when when that happens, you're able to enjoy it so much more because you're not it's not life and death. And that's all it was for me for a really long time. My family saved me from being the you know broken artist. These rappers said they took over our caution and against there they go talking crazy with their hands again. I am everyone's just like invincible and they never had their heart broke and they never sat and thought about, you know, their grandma who passed. Like these are the songs that me and my partner Calif when we when we go to working on a record and we like we're like, what's going on in, in our lives? What's happening right now? What what can we talk about? What can we put out there that's honest and literally happening? You know, obviously there's, you know, we have fun with it, but the bulk of my music is literally based on the things that I'm observing and seeing and feeling and experiencing. And people are able to relate to that because they're experiencing those same things, which is everyday life. Shit, the sound of Philadelphia. Good shots and pretty beats. Come along with me. Hear my city speak. Well, there's an audience of hip-hoppers that grew up with the sound that we love that have the money to go to these shows and, buy, and they're not really seeing it anywhere. So I feel like right now is, is just a beautiful time for independent artists that make that grimy, gutter, you know, raw hip-hop. Not stopping them. I'm not, I'm not Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. That's how I feel. Uh, speaking of hip hop, uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to talk with Hezekiah, a fantastic rapper and producer. And we're also going to take you around the pop-up garden. So keep it right here. Well, welcome back to the 215 here in Maniunk at the PHS Pop-Up Garden. Let's keep on this hip-hop train. Okay, you're going to meet a man raised in Chester, PA. Okay. On soul, jazz, and funk music. It's Hezekiah. Philadelphia, PA, USA. My name is Hezekiah. When this thing started to happen for you, mm -hmm. what was your thoughts or what was your feelings on, like, yo, like, I'm really about to make moves in this hip-hop I didn't know. When you do something when you was a kid and you you just keep doing it, you don't even realize what you're doing. Let's go. You do things naturally and you just follow your spirit. I call my music ABM, it was which AB. is all black music. My mom raised me on jazz. My dad was, my pops, he, uh, he was in the country and, and funk and rock and, you know, Santana and, and The Last Poets and Gil Scott Heron and everything all combined in my house. <laughs> my, my grandfather had a band called The Gospel Disciples. They rehearsed in my grandfather's basement. We lived right down the street from my grand, So we would all just watch the whole band rehearse and record in the basement. That was like my introduction to, to everything. We are the Beat Society. I'm credited as the first pe person to put producers on stage. I know it's crazy packed in here. I brought Kanye West to Philly in 2001. 
Illmind, Odyssey, Knots, Ninth Wonder, um, they all ran with us. And what was the motivation behind Beat Society? Me being a producer and nobody knowing I was a producer and people comparing me to uh, other rappers. Another day in the studio, working on this production Talk album. a little bit about some of your directing, the artistic energy that yeah, you put into yeah, your yeah. projects. I'm a grill issue. <laughs> I just grab a camera and do whatever. Prices. I like different stuff, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like like, like um, creative stuff, taking nothing and making it into something. It doesn't always have to be so clean. It doesn't always have to be perfect. It's makeshift, it, and, and, and somehow it makes magic happen. Hello, how you been? Your band, Johnny Popcorn. Johnny Popcorn, yeah, man. We got a late start already. Me and my homeboy, Tom Whitfield, which is a Bilal's bass player, we created this band called Johnny Popcorn. I took away from that experience uh, freedom as far as like as an artist and as a uh, vocalist. Yeah, I don't know if you hold it back, I want everything. The Universe Does Not Reward Fear was my, la my last project. That came out during the pandemic. That had a song called Forgiveness on it. Well, I forgive you, brother. I forgive you, father. Went back to Chester, invited my whole family on the, you know, to, the, to the, my grandma's stoop. I said, Grandma, can I shoot a video at your at your house? She said, nah. <laughs> she said, no. And I was like, Grandma, I said, why? She said, because the house is junky. I said, Grandma, the house is not junky. The house is art. I pray for you. Every time, since I was a kid, I saw you with this carpet and with this, and with the, all the kids, on, you know, in the background with all the pictures in the background. She had her whole family. She took care of the whole family. I know one day we gonna find a way. The first verse is actually forgive, I forgive you. And the second verse is forgive me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's the yin and the yang, the, 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 the cycle of forgiveness. Table, this is all me. Next up is colors, man. I see light here today. It's a whole experience. It's sound geometry, music and sound therapy. Stars in the universe. Physical education. Each color has an education. Fruits and vegetables that are green usually consist of what's called hydrogen. My brother had cerebral palsy. During the pandemic, I gave him a bunch, a bunch of music. This mug started throwing my beats in GarageBand, and that started the whole project. He separated the beats in like four albums. These are albums. Each, each color represents an album. Each album has nine tracks. So all together, that's 36. 36 uh, means enter the heart. So that's the foundation of the album, the heart. So we want everybody to come into the heart. Peace world, please forgive us because we know not what we've done. It's all about the colors. I think that's my life work with the pen in it. Bomb. Yeah. Hezekiah's latest project is called Colors, and you can find out more information at HezekiahColors.com. Mike? Was that Breland? She, she said my name, didn't she? Yeah. This is Christina. She runs this place, basically. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. Before we get into the food, I, I, we love history on this show. What is this place? So this is an old coal chute. Uh, the SEPTA rail line is behind us. It was the original Reading Railroad, and the uh, coal trains would come into the area. This is the last remaining one, but there were multiples, and they would the coal trains would veer off, drop their coal, and neighbors and businesses would come and pick it up and heat their houses. So this place has got to be over 100 years old. Yes. OK, well, let's get back to the food. OK. Uh, now, you do have some kind of bar food, like pretzels and stuff like that, and french fries and popcorn. But what is that? Uh, this is a grilled bratwurst with beer, caramelized onions, and spicy mustard. Okay, I guess that could be bar food, too. Yeah. This is a little more upscale with mushrooms. Uh, marinated mushroom tacos with pineapple salsa, really nice, fresh for the season. And then some hummus. Uh, everybody loves a yes. good artichoke dip hummus. Yes. But here's the star of the show, kids, for me. This is a triple layer heirloom tomato sandwich. Some fresh arugula, some um, roasted garlic aioli on toasted sourdough. It's gonna just like get messy. So is this from the garden in the back here? This one is, yes. Well, how fresh could that be? I mean, 20 minutes ago. How long into the season will you go? Until frost? Uh, Halloween, we throw a big oh. Halloween party. And then that's it? Yeah, Rocky Horror is coming uh, in October. Oh, horrors! <laughs> Good to see you, Christine. Thanks so much for coming. All right, I'm gonna eat while you watch this.
Welcome back to the 215. Uh, Mike is getting back to his Kansas roots, doing yep. a little agriculture here. Well, it, I'm harvesting. They have a community garden here, and <laughs> I've got some tomatoes from Cherry you Tomatoes. You've got a big haul here. Yeah, and some cucumbers. Some of them have overgrown. But I'll tell you what they do here. They uh, have this community garden, they harvest, and then take it over to the North Lake Community Center. They Which have a is super awesome. food pantry. Yeah. You know, so thank you. Nicely done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's about that time to get to our last story of the evening. Yes. Who, 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 who are we talking about? The queen of house. I was born into this thing, literally. My mom sent me to Settlement Music School on 4th and Queen. I also went to Gerard Academic Music Program, GAMP, for short. You got 20 years in this house music game. I did. I did. What drew you to that? I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing. You know, R&B is definitely represented. Even a little bit of rock here in Philadelphia is represented. Punk rock, represented. Rap, represented. Even classical, represented. I did not see House. So why not put House on a map coming from Philly? What was your first release? Happiness with King Brick on the Silk 130 Remembers Only uh, project. And that's when it started. When your mom's got ill, you had to take a bit of a break. Yes. 2017 is when I came back because she, she passed away April 20th, 2017 at 420. And I don't know what happened. You know, I was, we were trying, me and my man, my manager and myself was trying to figure out how we could come back, how we could do it without any gimmicks. And this gentleman in Lockett, all the way in South Africa, was videoed lip syncing my song. That brother made me go back and learn all my music the way it should be. That video went viral. Yes, 30 million people now have viewed and shared. That video, it changed my life. It's the reason why I'm consistently working. He made me see that it's, my job is important. learning my music the way I did or the way it should be done, I get better results in hearing it. I hear the people say, she sounds just like the record. I like that. Those emotions, those feelings that they felt the very first time they heard it, it all comes back. working on a new project yes. with Molly Maul, right? DJ Molly, the legendary DJ Molly Maul, yeah. I came to bring the pain, I came to bring the pain, yes I did. I'm excited about that because a lot of people didn't know that he was into house, but he started out in house first. And then Mr. Magic had uh, convinced him to come on over to hip hop. And I'm sure hip hop is very grateful. Come on, can we do it? I, I like making a difference in a positive light for people. And it got even deeper 
in the music, making a difference, and having people to tell you that it's your music and your lyrical content. They don't really know how to put it, but they say those lyrics, they did something for me. I purposely come out, you know, with the intent to make people feel good. I, I just do. I hope you caught the fact that she's been working with legendary Marley Marl. How yeah, about that? That's super cool. And you can find out more information about her at Instagram. Rip. The Lady Alma. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Guys. tonight's episode of the 215. But Our time's come to an end already. We need to make a decision about the rest of the evening. Oh? Should we just smell flowers or drink beer? Why not both? Okay. <laughs> See you next week.